Hello. This session is the first exercise of the practical part of the hydrology video tutorial. In the theoretical part, we have already seen what a catchment is, the hydrological methods available in WIB and the soil moisture method in more detail. We will need to download the O8 hydrology folder to follow the practical exercises. In this exercise, we will develop a hydrological model in WIB using the soil moisture method. We will add catchments and their runoff infiltration links and a stream flow gauge. We will also create the catchment disaggregation and enter their area using the remainder 100 function. Next, we will include the observed streamflow time series in a streamflow gauge and enter the climate data to each catchment. Then we will create the key assumptions by using a script and link them to the hydrological parameters. Finally, we will run the model and explore the results. The model corresponds to the La Estrella River Basin, which has an area of around 48 square kilometers. The catchments were delimited following the procedure explained in the theoretical session what a catchment is in WIB. To simplify the exercise in this tutorial, the catchments were disaggregated considering only the land cover classes. The modeler defines the disaggregation, which aims to assign hydrological parameters correctly considering factors related to not only the vegetation, but also geomorphological and geological features. Four catchments were defined. They are shown in the figure in different colors. Areas in square kilometers and percentage distribution by land cover classes in each catchment are shown in the table. The table also shows the central latitude of the polygons representing catchments. The model already has two rivers called creek and river, and two of the four catchments. The climate and the stream flow data are in the model folder within the web areas folder. We will follow the next steps. First, we need to complete the hydrological model by adding the two missing catchments. Then we need to enter their area, latitude and hydrological parameters. Next, add the streamflow information to the gauge streamflow gauge. Finally, calibrate and validate the hydrological model. To follow this exercise, you must open the SEI Tutorial Hydrology Exercise 1 file and open the Exercise 1 version. The model has two catchments, two runoff infiltration links, and two rivers. We are going to set first the time horizon of the model. Go to General, Years and Time Steps. The modeling period is from 1989 to 2015. It is a monthly model, meaning one year is divided into 12. To complete the schematic of the model, we need to add two catchments and the stream flow gauge. The modeler assigns the names of the catchments. I prefer to add the prefix catch to distinguish them from the demand sites in the data tree. WIP groups catchments and demand sites under the same category in the data tree. Assigning the prefix catch, we can sort by name and differentiate them. These elements are grouped because a catchment can also include an irrigation demand. We will name the catchments with the prefix catch followed by their location. Right click on the north catchment. Select General Info and add the prefix catch to the name. Finish. Do the same for the East Catchment. Right click General Info, Catch East, Finish. We are going to add now the two missing catchments. Whip elements are added by dragging and dropping to the desired location if 
it is represented as a point or upstream to downstream if it is represented as a line. Drag a catchment from the element panel and drop it on this orange polygon. There are two ways to add catchments manually and use the catchment delineation mode. We will use the catchment delineation mode during the third hydrology practical exercise. Click on No for now. Name it Catch South Finish. Repeat this process for the other missing catchment. Drag a catchment from the element panel and drop it on this green polygon. Name it Catch West Finish. If we are going to use the soil moisture method, we must add a runoff infiltration link to each catchment. The end point location defines where we will add the catchment's outflows. We will add it to the rivers, but it could also be added to a groundwater node. The runoff infiltration link must be plotted following the flow direction from the catchment to the river. Drag a runoff infiltration link and drop it on the catch south catchment. Remember that the endpoint location defines where the outflows will be added. The endpoint should be located according to the area representing each catchment. Double click on the river at the poor point of the orange catchment polygon here. You are asked in the pop up window. Does this catchment inflow represent the health flow for the river's river? If we select yes, the end point will be added to the health flow of this river. If we select no, the end point will be added where you clicked on. Select yes to see what WIP does. If we leave the schematic like this, these catchment outflows will be added here, meaning that they come from a basin upstream of the starting point of this river. These catchment outflows represent the orange area. Therefore, we must add the ending point here and not at the health flow of this river. We can drag this ending point and move it to where we need. Drop it here, at the poor point of the orange catchment. We are asked in the pop-up window, if you move this catchment inflow node from its place at the top of the river, the catchment inflow will no longer represent the health flow for the river river. Is this correct? Select yes. This is what we are looking for. You must add the runoff infiltration links carefully. The model schematic should represent reality as best as possible. This orange area is being represented by this catchment. WIP will calculate the water balance for the entire area. Therefore, flows should be added at the poor point of this area. At this point, we will only have natural stream flow results. Repeat the process for the catch west. Drag a runoff infiltration link and drop it on the catch west catchment. Double click on the poor point of this green catchment area. We must select no because these catchment outflows do not represent the head flow for the river creek. Zoom in to see how WIP will add the catchment outflows to the river. The outflow from this orange catchment will flow downstream of this inflow node to this river ridge. The outflows from this blue catchment will flow downstream from this inflow node. That means that the stream flow in this river ridge will correspond to the accumulated outflows from the orange and blue area. The stream flow at the mouth of this creek corresponds to the outflows of the green 
catchment. WIP adds the creek stream flow to this river reach downstream of this inflow point. The stream flow in this river reach corresponds to the accumulated outflow of the orange, blue, and green catchments. I am highlighting this because the ending points of the run of infiltration links, which are inflow nodes, define the river reaches. Therefore, the stream flow available over each river. The model schematic must reflect the modeling system. The order of the inflow points must be checked. Finally, the only element we are missing on the schematic is the stream flow gauge. Turn on the stream flow gauge layer on the GIS layer panel. Drag the stream flow gauge element and drop it on the river near this blue point, which represents the location of the station. Name it gauge. From a schematic point of view, the hydrological model is complete. The model has the rivers, the catchments with their runoff infiltration links and the stream flow gauge. The next step is to characterize each element. We will start entering the streamflow information. Right click on the streamflow gauge, select Edit Data, and then Streamflow Data. We can access any streamflow gauge by going to Supply and Resources and then River. We have two rivers named River and Creek. When there is a streamflow gauge on a river, this streamflow gauge category appears. If you expand the tree under the creek, there is no streamflow gauge category. As you build your models, you will become familiar with this structure of the data tree. You can then go to the variable directly in the data view using the data tree. Select Read from File Wizard for entering the Streamflow information. Access the Streamflow folder and select the file Monthly Streamflow 1989-2015. The file has monthly information. Check the text tab. The file has three columns named Year, Month, and Gauge. We can see the information in the file. The graph shows missing data, but we will not use any method to fill the missing values. Finish. Before continue entering the catchment information, check the hydrological method first. Go to the schematic view. Right click on any catchment, for example, catch south. Select edit data and then method. The method selected is the soil moisture method. Check the method of the other catchments. Click on demand sites and catchments. All catchments have the soil moisture method selected. We could change it here. We are going to continue entering the catchment information. The first step is to create the catchment disaggregation. Then we can enter areas. Finally, the climate and hydrological parameters are assigned to each catchment. Open the Excel file Catchment Information. We can see on the table that the catchment disaggregation is by land cover classes. The land cover classes are here in this column. We must create these classes in WIP under each catchment. Copy the name of the first land cover class from the Excel file. Open spaces with little or no vegetation. Go to the first catchment. Right click on it and select Add. We must enter a name. To paste the name in WIP, right click and select Paste. The Ctrl V function does not work in WIP. Continue adding each class. Copy the name of the second class, Heterogeneous Agricultural Areas, then right-click on the catchment and select Add. Right-click and select Paste. 
copy forest add paste copy permanent crops add paste postures artificial surfaces shrub and or herbaceous vegetation once we add the disaggregation in this case by land cover classes we can enter the areas go to the area variable we need to assign the unit first for entering the data we will enter the total area in the first box and the percentage distribution by land cover classes in the rest of the boxes select square kilometers for the area and percentage for the land cover classes in the first box under unit select area square kilometers from the drop down menu in the rest of the boxes select share this disaggregation is made the first time manually we do not have to repeat this process we can copy and paste these branches to other catchments. We need to have first this empty structure created. Then select the catchment with the empty structure. Right click on it and select copy branches. Right click on the catchment to which you want to paste the branches and select paste branches. We can repeat this process as many times as we need. Do the same for the other two catchments. Copy branches, paste branches, copy and paste. The first time is manual. Then we can copy and paste the branches. We can finally enter the information. We will do it by exchanging the information with Excel. Go to Edit export expressions to excel we want the area variable for now select export to new workbook branches all scenarios current accounts variables area okay we can assign the expression in this file to the element variables and then import the changes into WIP. the area information is in the file catchment information Verify the units first. The areas in WIP must be entered in a square kilometers and the area of the land cover classes as a percentage. The units in the file are OK. The order of the information for each catchment is the area and then the percentage of each land cover class. The order of the land cover classes is the same in both files we can copy and paste the information for each catchment. Copy the area and the percentages for the catch south from the file catch information and paste it into the file exported from WIP. Repeat the process for the other three catchments. You should have the information like this. When we use percentage distribution in WIP, the sum must be exactly 100%. To ensure that the sum is 100%, we can use the remainder 100 function in one land cover class. The remainder 100 function is used to calculate a category automatically. What WIP is going to do is assign the missing percentage to reach 100% to the land cover class in which the function was assigned. We could add the function in any land cover class. However, if you are going to include scenarios of land cover changes, it would be better to use the function in the land cover class that will be changed. For example, if it is a reforestation scenario, we could use the function in the forest or pasture classes. Use the remainder 100 function in the pasture class. Change the value to remainder 100. You should now have the information like this. Go to WIP to import these expressions. Go to Edit, Import Expressions from Excel. 
always check from which file we will import the information. Once we finishes, it shows a summary. Verify that the information we entered in Excel was imported. In the catch North catchment, we have 7.69 square kilometers. 21.99% of heterogeneous agricultural areas, 74.92% of permanent crops, and the remaining percentage will be pastures. The remainder 100 function should calculate 3.09%. We can go to the table to check. There is 3.1 percentage of pastures. The remainder 100 function is useful for entering percentage distributions to ensure that all the entered values sum exactly 100%. We are going to continue adding the latitude information. Go to the latitude variable under the climate tab for the demand sites and catchments. Go to Edit, Export Expressions to Excel. We want the latitude variable. Select Export to New Workbook, Branches, All, Scenarios, Current Accounts, Variables, Latitude. The information is in the file Catching Information. Verify the order of the information. Copy and paste it. Go to Edit, Import Expressions from Excel. Verify that the data were imported. We have already entered the elements, rivers, catchments, runoff infiltration links, and a stream flow gate. We also enter the area and latitude for each catchment and the stream flow to the gauge. We will continue in the next session entering the climate data, creating key assumptions using a script linking them to the hydrological parameters and exploring the results.